Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Jamie Holden here, and we're so happy to have you join us once again this week. Uh, today for Mantor Guy Podcast, as you can probably hear in my voice, um, the flu has hit our house, and we originally intended to have a guest on today to do a full interview for you guys, and I apologize, unfortunately we're not able to do that, I've just been too sick, but we wanted to bring you a new episode this week, so what we're going to do is go ahead and share with you the main session message from our 2018 Delaware Mantor, where Pastor John Bowman shared with the men about utilizing God's toolbox in their lives. It was a powerful message. Uh, We want to give you a chance to hear it today, and we'll just go ahead and jump right into that message today. So enjoy today's word by Pastor John Bowman from the 2018 Delaware Mantor. But We have a common bond today, and his name is Jesus Christ. And what I want you to do today is just Throughout this time, as you're getting, when you sit down with someone that, that you don't know, or, or, or uh, just, just say to each other, hey, buddy, Jesus is Lord. Don't say anything about their wife, okay? We don't want, <laughs> we don't want, we don't, we don't want to get in the middle of that. Hey, I'm excited today. I'm excited to be with you all today and with the message that God has, has really put on my heart, and uh, we hope that you have a pen, because I believe that... Uh, you, you, need to, uh, you need to write things down. When you write things down, you see it, you're going to retain it. You should have a booklet. My, my assistant had, had made a book, and it's just right here. And you need to take this out, take your pen out, because we're going to go ahead and get started uh, pretty, pretty right away. Okay? The question is, we're going to be talking today about God's toolbox. God's toolbox. I have up here is I have a nice old toolbox. And God's toolbox is, the question I have is, how many of us, here's my question today, how many of us want to be instruments of righteousness? How many of us want to be instruments of righteousness? You can go to the next one where it says God's toolbox. Gearing up to communicate with God. Now, inside this toolbox that I have up here, there are tools. How many guys like tools? Yeah. I have a set of craftsman wrenches. I've been married for, it'll be 38 years this April. I have a set of craftsman wrenches still in the plastic case that they came in. It was the very first gift my my wife bought me over 38 years, well, 38 years ago, and I still have the complete set. Yeah, I don't let anybody touch them. You know, I take care of those. They're a treasure. But inside this toolbox we're going to share today, there's tools that we're going to learn that's going to help every man to be a godly man as we move in and out this world that we live in today. This world needs godly men. Let's get right into it. Our scripture today, it's a very similar, you can go to the next slide. Our scripture today is a very, we've read it, we've heard it. You've heard preachers preach about it, but I think it's applicable to today because God's Word is applicable to today. Amen. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. How many of us know that the devil, he has a scheme? He has, God has a plan for our life, but the devil also has a plan for our lives. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the bread of righteousness and the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flame and arrows 
of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. But if we want to be a godly man in our world today, we need to take on, we need to take up and put on the full armor of God. The first tool that we have in, the, in this toolbox, and you're going to see it, it's the belt of truth. There's the very first tool that we're asked to put on is the belt of truth. Godly men, godly men are called to put on the belt of truth. Now, there's a lot of, in our world today, there's a, seems to be definition as, well, what is truth? Uh, well, actually, that, that question was asked 2,000 years ago when Pilate was questioning Jesus. So, uh, what is truth? And the question is still today, there seems to be a warped definition about what truth is. Truth today could be defined as, it's what I believe in. Whatever we believe in, what I believe in, that makes it true because I believe in it. But we are called, as godly men, we are called to put on the belt of truth. So the question is, how do we do this? First, by learning as much as we can about the truths that are right here, that are in God's Word. We need to learn about the truths that are in the Bible. So I always like breaking things down to the lowest denomination. So first of all, we know we need to learn the truth about what's in here. Now, so how do I learn about the truth that's in here? Well, here's some ways. Church. Finding a good church. You know what? When I, when I got saved uh, 28 years ago, I remember they said, if you want to find a good church, here's a, here's a, a, a good way you find a good church. You find a church as you see people walking in like this. And they're carrying their Bible in. And you can pretty, there's an indication there that more than likely the Word of God is going to be preached. Because they're, they're carrying their Bible in. They're not going in empty handed. They're carrying their Bible in. So that's a good way of finding a good church. Find a church that preaches the Word of God. The whole Word of God. All of it. Secondly, devotions. Devotions is simply, it's just spending time with God. Just simply sitting down. You know what I do? I like having a cup of coffee. I call it coffee with Jesus. I like sitting down and having a cup of coffee with Jesus in the morning with some worship music and, and reading devotions and reading the Word of God. Now, you know, I read, I read three pages of the Bible every single night. I've been doing that for the last 15 years, and I've read the Bible through multiple times in the last 15 years. We put on the belt of truth through our worship. As we worship God, well, how do we know that? Well, because the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. And as we begin to worship God, and if we're struggling with sin, I told a fellow yesterday, hey, you know what I suggest you do? I suggest when you get into your car, have, the, have that, that, that worship song and blast that thing because when you begin to worship the Lord, God says, here I am, I'm here because God inhabits the praises of his people. And if God is there, the enemy can't be there because devil cannot hang around where there's God. He has to flee from this. Small groups with other men. Men, men need men. We really do. We need some godly men. Some men that we're going to brush up against. And we're going we're gonna to be able to lean. Moses, you know, had Aaron and Ur, you know, her as they lifted up his hand. When he was weak, they held him up. And we need men that are going to do that when they see a brother that's walking out with his head hanging low. And we can go to him. We can encourage him. We can lift him up. We lift him up in prayer. We lift him up with encouraging words, not words of condemnation. But we need to have men who have this ability to go to a brother and say, hey, man, we need to have a chat. I remember reading 
uh, uh, about a story about a guy who was, who was mentoring a man, and, and this man was, was, was uh, going to be traveling out to Denver, and his old high school girlfriend was there, and she says, well, why don't we meet up? Why don't we meet up for lunch? Seems innocent, right? Well, when his buddy heard about it, his buddy said, no. He said, I want you to get on the phone right now, and I want you to call her and tell her you're not going to meet with her. Because it's not appropriate. It's wrong. And he said, after you make that phone call, I want you to get on the phone, and I want you to tell your wife. Because if you don't, I'm going <laughs> to. So we need men like that. Here we go. Why? Because why, why do we put on the belt? Go to the next one. There's a saying, it says a spiritual leader is a godly leader. If, we're, if we want to be a spiritual leader in the home, we need to be a godly leader. A godly leader is a godly man. A godly man is a man devoted to God. Question. My question is, who are we devoted to? What are we devoted to? Hey, I'm an Eagle fan. Whether you like it or not. That doesn't mean I'm devoted. They're not number one on my list. You know what? I really like Carson Wentz because I noticed something. I noticed something that he did. He had a tweet. He tweeted out happy birthday to his, to his five-year-old lab, uh, lab retriever because Carson likes to hunt. And, and he got flack for that from people in the community. How dead? Because there was, there was geese that were laying in front of this dog and they, they, they blasted him because of that picture, because he showed dead animals. Carson came out and said this. He said, there are two things that I'm very passionate about. Number one is my faith and my relationship with Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and hunting. If you talk to me, I'm going to talk about those two things. You know what I noticed? He didn't say anything about football. And he... he, he he was on his way to be the MVP this year, which I personally think he should still be. But phenomenal quarterback, phenomenal guy. Didn't say a word about football. Why? Because he knew what he was, who he was devoted to. He was devoted to Jesus. He knew that everything came. The second way of putting on the belt of truth is to always be truthful in everything you do. Be a man of your word. Be a man of your word. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If you're a dad, you say you're going to do something with your kids, do it. Be a man of your word. Let's move on. Let's look at another piece, one other tool that we have in here. The next tool that we have in our toolbox is the breastplate of righteousness. We have the breastplate of righteousness. And here, it says this right here. Okay, because it says, this is what we need. You see, on a construction site, having a safety vest is important so that you can be seen by others. You ever see a worker that, that's on the side of the road, they're wearing a big, you know, or, or either orange or, or yellow vest. Why? Because there's cars flying by. <laughs> And they want to be seen as we put on this breastplate of righteousness. Men, the world is watching. They're watching godly men. They're seeing, are you really going to be who you say you're going to be? Are you going to act the way that you say you're going to act? We're seen by others. Why is this breastplate so, is so important? It's because we need to guard our hearts. I'm a hunter. I love the deer hunt. And I'm going to tell you, the kill shot in hunting is the heart. It's hard to hit, but if you hit that heart, that deer's not going very far. He's going to go 20, maybe, or she, or he or she, that deer, is going to go 20 to 30 yards, and it's going to drop. The enemy is after your heart today. He's after your heart. There is a war that is raging today. Between the Lord and Satan and the heavenly realms, it says there, there, there's a battle that's happening on right now for every single man's heart. Every single one. Because whoever has the man's heart has not only, let me tell you this, if, they, if whoever has the man's heart has not only his heart, but he has the heart. He has the heart of his family. 
This battle is one of the hardest that we men will fight. The temptation to sin is all around us. We must be alert. Watch out. Watch out for Satan because he is ready and he's watching to attack. Our scripture here says this right here in 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be alert and sober-minded so your enemy is the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I remember as a kid watching United Kingdom, United Mutual Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Anybody else remember that? And I, I can remember watching the, 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 the wildebeest in Africa and how the lions would, would just sort of, they would hang out and they, had, and they would hang out on the sidelines and they would sort of prowl around. And one of the lions would, would say something, okay, I, I don't know what kind of call that the lions would give but they, they would, the, the attack would happen. And I remember watching them run by the biggest wildebeest that would feed all the lions for at least a week. And who were they going after? They went after the small one. They went after the weak. And that's exactly what Satan wants to do. He wants to go after the man that is beat down. He's a punk. He's the one that's going to kick you when you're down. He's going to come after you. If, if we're not in the Word of God, and if we're not in prayer, we're not in devotions, and we're not hanging around godly men, we're weak. And, and he's going to come in, and he's going to attack because he hates us. He hates us. Why? Because we were created in the image of God. The second way that we put on this breastplate of righteousness is we, we live out our lives to please the Lord. We live living out our lives to please God. We live, we, we cho we're choosing truth. It's a choice. We're choosing the truth. We're choosing kindness. We're choosing obedience. It all comes down to choice. It all comes down to choice. I'm in charge of the remote. When I'm sitting there looking at the TV and there's no one else with me and I'm down in that basement, I'm in charge. I can choose to sit there and watch what's on TV. I can choose that. I can take that TV and I can flip over to another channel. I'm in charge. I, I don't have to go into a sinful situation. I don't have, no one's twisted my arm and thrown it behind my back and said, you're going to sin today. It's my choice. It's my choice whether I'm going to be a godly man. It all comes down to choice. But here what we need to do is we need to ask that God will help us to make the right choice every single day. Every day. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And if we ask God to help us, he will. Yep. You're listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. <laughs> I hope you've been enjoying this powerful word from Pastor John Bowman, and we'll be back with the remainder of the message right after these messages. We're all men under construction. Under Construction is a spiritual how-to book where men come together to share their experiences and the wisdom they've gained on their own journey to biblical manhood and building a legacy of godliness. Written by 30 different men and pastors and men's leaders, Under Construction discusses six key areas all men can grow spiritually. Order your copy today at MantorMinistries.com. God's not finished with you yet. We're all under construction. Order your copy today at MantorMinistries.com. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Did you know that 90% of boys and 70% of girls are exposed to pornography online? Meanwhile, 71% of kids say that they're hiding internet activity from their parents. In 56% of divorce cases today, a major contributing factor is one spouse's continued use of inappropriate content online. What are you doing to protect your family online? Covenant Eyes Internet Accountability monitors how the internet is used on your family's mobile devices and their computers. Each web page visited is rated similar to TV shows or video games, like T for teen or M for mature. This information is collected in easy to read reports, and as a parent, you can receive weekly reports for your kids. Plus, you can invite your friends to receive reports for your internet activity, which enables you to enjoy the benefits of accountability and protection online as well. These reports provide you with a comprehensive view of how the internet is used in your home. 
They include information like the videos that are watched and words typed into search engines. Are you looking for additional protection? Covenant Eyes also provides internet filtering, which blocks inappropriate content and limits the amount of time spent online. Install Covenant Eyes on all your devices, your computers, phones, and tablets. There's no extra charge, and we provide free customer support. It's that simple. Sign up today. It's your turn to protect yourself and your family online. Sign up for Covenant Eyes using the code MANTOR at checkout and receive one month of free service. Visit CovenantEyes.com today to sign up. And remember, one month of free service when you use the code MANTOR. That's M-A-N-T-O-U-R. Don't forget to visit iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Hey, guys. The Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden here. You know, I'd love to come share at your church, at your men's ministry, at your next men's event, or men's breakfast. I have a challenging word for God's men to help them become the men that God has called them to be. If you'd like to have me come share with your group, visit MantorMinistries.com to contact me about coming to challenge and encourage your church's men to grow in their walk with God. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. The next tool that we have in our, in our toolbox is the shoes of peace. We have the shoes of peace. You know a good pair of work boots is good for every man. You need a good pair of boots. You know, when, when I, when I, there's certain boots that I wear when I go out hunting. There's boots that I'll wear in the, in, the, in, the, in the springtime. When I go out turkey hunting, I'm going to wear a lighter pair of boots. And when I go out in the fall for deer hunting, I'm going to wear a lighter pair of boots. But I'm going to tell you what, when I go out and it gets colder, I'm going to be wearing more and more. I'm going to get someone that has the 1800, you know, and my toes are going to be nice and toasty. But you know, I can remember I was also in the Navy, and when you're in the Navy, they gave you steel toe boots. Because, you know, if something could fall on your foot and it could crush your toes, boots protect workers' feet against the elements and against heavy objects. They also give traction. We have traction. Traction is important. We've been working so we don't slip. Traction is also important when you're battling the enemy. And he's trying to knock you back. And if you're standing firm on the gospel of peace, he ain't going to rock you back. You're going to be having a firm foundation because you've got, good, you've got a good pair of boots. Amen. You know, but time to time, we need to clean the butt. We need to clean those treads off, don't we? We need to clean them off and prepare them again. The boot on the shoes of peace is when we gain peace with God by accepting. Here, this is how we get these boots of peace. Because it's when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we begin to walk every single day. You know, it was Jenny C. Riley. These boots are made for walking, and walking is what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And as we begin to walk each day, we could show, we could show the good news of God's peace by how we live our lives. You'll have guys come and say, hey, you know, I noticed, I noticed something different about you. What is it? I like those questions. What is it? There's something different about you. You don't act like anybody else in the workplace. What do you got that I ain't got? Well, I got, I got shoes of peace. I got peace that comes through Jesus Christ. Wasn't that great? How God can actually send people like that to you? So we have these shoes of peace. We can have God's peace. And we need to begin, guys, we need to begin to see ourselves as God sees us. And there's a saying here, it says this right here. It says, if what you think about yourself is different than what God says, well, who's wrong? We need to find out what, what does God call us? And I like when he, when he went to, he went to uh, 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 um, Gideon and they said, Hey, hey, mighty warrior, who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. God looks at us as mighty warriors. Let's move on here. Let's go into another, another this, we got a couple more tools in here. We have, this is not really a tool that we would actually use, but you know what? I love it. It's a shield of faith. Oh, my. Do we need the shield of faith? Because you know what? There are, there are lies that, that are headed toward us. 
There, there are fl- the devil, is, he wants to tear us down. Fiery arrows of the devil, the shield of faith throughout the day. Our foe, the enemy, will try his hardest to pull the godly man down. He wants to destroy the godly man. He wants to have people. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, in a world today, you know, where, where even just an accusation, you're guilty. Even with just an accusation, you're guilty. That's the way our world works today. But you know what I do is I don't step into those places do I give him any kind of foothold. He gets nothing. So I, I need to, we need to be men that we need to be, we, we need to be walking and we need to be prepared that the enemy is going to attack us. He will try to get us to believe any and every lie so that he can have us. He can have doubt. He wants to cause doubt. Excuse me, what's called doubt in our lives. Men, Satan is a liar. He's a liar. How can we have this shield of faith? Number one, we need to build up our faith. Build up your faith. We just can't say, okay, Jesus, I believe in you today, and it's over. That's not the way it works. We need to trust God to act in our behalf, that we can be heavily minded. Keep our thoughts on heaven, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's excellent, whatever's praiseworthy. This is what we need to think about. We need to build up our faith. When do we build up our faith? Every single time we bow our heads and we call out in the name of Jesus, our faith is being built. We're building a wall of faith. Every time you walk into the church, there's another brick that's, that's in the construction zone that is going to be placed on this wall of faith that we need to build up. Number two is surround yourself with godly men. Who's influencing you? I've told, I'll tell you what, I've told men many times, hey, who's your best buddy? Well, if, if, if he's a godly man, your best buddy better be a godly guy. If he's not, he's going to tear you down. He's going to pull you down into the things of the world. All right, here we go. Let's look at another tool. We have another tool in our toolbox. It's the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Wearing a helmet is really important. I've had my, my noggin hit a few times and wish I had my helmet on. I got a scar right over top of here in 1980. Uh, a... Uh, a block and tackle fell from 15 feet off a kink post on board the ship, and it hit my, hit my, my head, you know, right there, scraped me. I tried to get out of mid-watch that night. The captain said, get up here and steer the ship. <laughs> and I tried to use an excuse, you know, but it didn't work. I sure wish that I had a helmet on at that time. As godly men, our helmet is our salvation. Our enemy wants to attack our mind. We need to be careful, fellas. We need to be careful, check it out. We need to be careful by what we think about. What's what's going through your mind? Now, temptation isn't a sin. It's not sin to be, it's not a sin to be tempted, because death Jesus was tempted in every single way, but yet was without sin. We need to be careful. What are you watching on TV? What what kind of movies do we watch? Is it showing an act of, if, could you sit there with Jesus and watch that movie? If the answer is no, then we turn it off. We don't, we don't do, we don't move into that area. Number three, be careful by what we're reading. Because there are, there are things out there, fellas, that, that are, I, I remember asking a guy one time, I said, hey, how's your Bible reading going? Well, I really don't read the Bible that much, but I read, I read books that have scriptures in it. That's not the Word of God. The Word of God is the, it stands alone as the Word of God. Now, you can read other material. Absolutely, I have tons of books in my office. It's good stuff. But we need to be careful about what we're lending to our minds. Le- we need to be careful about what we listen to, the conversations that we're having, the jokes, the music, all these things that are being put into our minds. We need to be careful about what we lend to our brain. How do we do that? Here we go. Number one, accept responsibility for your thoughts. I am in charge of the remote. I can, no one, I'm in charge about, you can go on to the next slide there, okay? 
Accept responsibility for your thoughts. I'm in charge. No, I can't blame it on somebody else. Number two, your mind, not just your behavior, must change. You know what? I like, thanks, Ray. Ray. I was with Ray Schlitt yesterday, and he told me, and I was like, man, I'm going to use that tomorrow. Why? Why? Why do we need to be, we say your mind, not just your behavior, must change. You see, the mind is stubborn. The mind is lazy. And oftentimes, the mind is scared of change. Therefore, instead of feeling our way into a new way of acting, we must act our way into a new way of feeling. We must take action because if I take action, the brain's going to follow what I do. It's going to follow me. So, your mind, not just your behavior, must change. Romans says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Number three, think through your problems rather than just react to them. How many times we wish it, boy, I really shouldn't have said that to her. <laughs> and if I would have thought that through, I didn't think that one through. I wish I would have thought about it. Number four, take your disabling thoughts captive. Take, your, take them captive. Take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. It, Jesus is my filter. The Word of God is my filter. Every thought has to be taken captive and make it obedient to Christ. Number five, choose to focus your thoughts on the right things. We are to think about these, those things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. When we think on these things, God promises to give us peace. When we think on these, and that's, you know what it is? It's an intentional thing too. And here we go, number six, it is possible. Fellas, we can do it. You can do it. You really, honestly, truly can. It's not easy to retrain your thoughts or to respond in, in new ways. But you know what? When you exercise it, you can do it. The last tool that we have in our box, I love it, the sword of the Spirit. This is our sword. This is our weapon. This is our do-it-all tool. You know, every man. Wouldn't you just like to have one tool that does everything? You know, you just, I got one tool in my toolbox. I can do anything with it. One tool. You do. It's right here. This is your do-it-all tool right here, fellas. This, this right here is, is, is going to help you. Help you grow as a godly man. This is the most important tool that you'll ever own, is the Bible. As godly men, we need to believe that the Bible is true and it's good for today. The Word of God is the, is, is the godly man's weapon. You, you see that, you know that conversation that Jesus and Satan were having in, the, in, 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 in Matthew chapter 4? Satan was trying to tear him down. <laughs> I like what one preacher said. Put that up there. He said, Every time Satan opened his mouth, Jesus shoved scripture down his throat. <laughs> yeah. But you got to be careful. Satan knows scripture too. Not only do we read the word, we study the word. We need to be men of the word. That's what we need to be. This right here is our, is our weapon. This is our do it all tool, fellas. And it goes everywhere. I carry one in my Bible. I, mean, I'm a carry one in my, I carry one in my Bible in my car. When I'm in my car and I'm stuck in a traffic jam, I'll whip that Bible out and I, I'm, I'm going to read it. I'm just going to, I'm going to read. I'm gonna, why? Because I'm putting these thoughts in my head. The only thing that's going to change our behavior, change us to be a godly man, is the Word of God. We need to trans be transformed by the renewing of your mind. One final note. About, about the armor. There's one final note about the armor. Is this armor is, is, is you know, Paul was right, and he was talking about, he was using the Roman soldier as, he was using that description. The Roman soldiers were very, they were feared. They were the fiercest army because they kept coming at you. Everybody was afraid of the Roman army. They kept coming at you, kept coming at you, kept coming at you. Why? Because I don't know what general it was. There was some general 
said, hey, I got a great idea. Why don't we make the armor one-sided so our guys won't turn around and run out of fear because they know that if they turn, they're open for an attack. We need to keep going. We need to keep going. Keep going. We may be rocked back, but we need to keep going and keep going. We may be rocked back a little bit, but we need to keep going. If the problem is, is when we turn, we turn away from the things of God. We're open. Can you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet, please. I don't, I don't, I don't know, guys. I don't know your heart today. I don't know where you're at with the Lord. You know? God does. He knows your heart today, fellas. We want to turn this, this room here just for the next few minutes. We want to turn this into what Jesus wanted it to be, a house of prayer. It's not a marketplace. It's God's house. It's the house of prayer. It's a place to where we can come. This altar area is open. I don't know where you're struggling, but God does. He knows today. And you know what the best part is? He's here, and he wants to heal it. He wants to open it up. He wants to open up, and he wants to pull that out of you. He's the great surgeon. He wants to open you up today, and he says, I'm going to put my hands on you. Are you struggling today with your walk? Right here. Come now. Move now. You struggling today in your walk with the Lord? Move out. Are you struggling with being, a, a, and you're surrounded, and, the, and you're being torn up by the enemy, and you don't know where to turn? It's like you're being beaten up. You're being attacked. Come. Come before him. Come before the general. Come before the captain of the host. Come before him today. Lay it open. Lay it bare. There's no condemnation here. Oh, I like it. When Paul said, I know the good that I should do. I know what I should do. And this speaks to me. I know the good that I should do, but I, I struggle with doing that. And I wind up doing the very thing that I know I shouldn't do. How many of us have ever felt that way? I know the good I should do, but I wind up doing the very thing that I know I shouldn't do. He says, who's going to save me from this? His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And listen, today, you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, fellas, let me tell you, I'm a blunt guy. I'm, I'm blunt. I'm just, I'm just giving it to you. I'm just telling you. The only way that we're going to make it is Jesus. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your friends, who somebody brought you today, they invited you today. Why? Because we, they want to spend eternity with you today. I want you, fellas, you know, I want everybody just to bow your heads with me. Because we we're not going to put anybody on the spot. I'm not asking to do that. But I want to know something today, because God already knows the answer. Today, are you sitting here today, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Maybe you were baptized as a little baby, and you think that that's all you need to do. Well, let me tell you something. The Bible says that Jesus Christ says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one gets to the Father except through me today. You want to join this armory? You want to put on this armor? Well, let me tell you, you need to enlist. <laughs> you need to enlist into the army of God today. And the way that we enlist today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to do a bold thing. We're men. We're, we're bold. We need to be bold today. I just want you to slip up your hand today. You've never invited Jesus Christ. He's not the Lord of your life. You have, you've not put him, the most important person in your life. Maybe you've backslid. He used to be up front, but now you've given him, you push him to the back, and there are things that are more important. Is that you today? Lift your hand up. Move down here. Come down to the front. We want to lay hands on you. We want to pray for you. You guys that, that, that pray for guys, we need help down here praying with guys. Stand in the gap. Do you know somebody who doesn't know Jesus Christ? Come here.
come here, stand in a gap. Do you have a brother? Do you have a friend who doesn't know Jesus? Stand in the gap. God said, I looked for a man that would stand in the gap, and I found none. Let him not say that here today about this man here at this mentor. He's gonna, he needs to find men that will stand in the gap. Do you know someone who's not saved? Do you know someone who's not saved? Come and stand in the gap for them. Stand in their place. Call upon heaven today. Ask the Holy Spirit to move on them. Stand in the gap today. Hallelujah. The Mantor Guy's final thought. It was such a powerful morning that morning in Delaware. The guys were all pumped up and excited about the Super Bowl the next day as their Eagles were getting ready to play. But even more than that, they were more focused on growing in their walk with God, becoming the men that God created them to be. And the men just really responded around the altar. We had two men accept Christ for the first time. Uh, Men were baptized in the Holy Spirit at this conference. It was just a really amazing day as the men came together to learn more about God and to grow in their walk with God. And one thing I really liked that Pastor John said in his message today was when he said, you know, every time the enemy comes at you, every time the enemy opens his mouth, shove the word of God back down his throat. And that's such a great quote, because the enemy, he comes to us all the time to attack us. And our number one weapon that we have to fight back against the enemy is God's word. So take that advice from John. And when the enemy starts throwing temptations and lies your way, shove the word of God back down his throat. However, in order to be able to do that, you have to know what God's Word says, right? So I encourage you. That's one reason why it's so important for us as God's men to know what the Bible says, to read the Word daily, to get it into our lives. So when the enemy comes at us and he throws his attacks, he throws his temptations, the Word of God is already inside of us that we can shove it down his throat, and we can fight back, and we can gain the victory. So I encourage you, if you're not doing it already, make daily prayer and Bible reading a part of your life. Do like John said. He said he reads just three pages of the Bible every day. It's a great plan to do it. Um, another way to do it is what I do is download the YouVersion Bible app and choose a Through the Bible in a Year plan. It's a great way to get the Bible into our lives so that the enemy does come and he does bring his attacks. We can shove the Word of God right back down his throat again. So guys, we hope you enjoyed this message. Um, I wanted to ask you a personal note here. If you'd please keep us in prayer. We have five mentors in five weeks coming up. As you can hear in my throat, I am quite sick, so we need the Holy Spirit. We need God's healing power to help us and give us a physical strength. God is moving in the first two conferences, and we want to see that continue to happen. So I need God's physical strength as we move forward. But, you know, I just want to encourage you, you know, wherever you are at today, no matter what you're doing, just keep moving forward with God. Keep going with your walk with God. And when the enemy attacks you, shove the word of God right back down his throat. So, guys, we'll see you next week on the Mentor Guy Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great week, guys. Thanks for listening to the Mentor Guy Podcast. Be sure to visit MentorMinistries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our mentor conferences. Mentor season's almost here, and this year we are under construction. Do not miss your local mentor conference. We have powerful main session speakers, and we have three new relevant workshops for 2018. So make sure to put your local mantra conference on your 2018 calendar. Remember, God's not finished with us yet. We're all under construction. For mantor conference dates and locations, visit mantorministries.com. Hey guys, Jamie Holden here. Did you know that only 10% of churches have a healthy, thriving men's ministry? That's only one out of 10 churches. Well, my mission is to see this number become 100%. Join me in my work with HGUS Missions to help develop men's ministry in the local church. Become a monthly financial investor in the work God called me to do by going to mentorministries.com partner and clicking on the Give Online button. Together, we can see God continue to move among men.